Hi, my name is Dave Hillowitz. I'm a composer and a violinist, and I wanted to talk a little bit about sampling. And specifically, I wanted to talk about round robin sampling, which is a technique that's used most on acoustic instruments and most often on short notes. So first we're gonna talk about what round robins are. Second, we're gonna talk about why they kind of suck. And third, we're gonna discuss a couple strategies for trying to remedy the problems. So let's get started. So first, what are round robins? Okay, so before we talk about what round robins are, let's imagine that we're making a violin sample that just consists of one note. Here, I'm gonna grab my violin, get recording started. Okay, I don't know if it's in tune, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, we've got our note, right? We, that should be enough. And imagine I'm going to make a piece of music that just consists of the same note over and over and over again. Maybe it's a, it's a rhythmic thing. Okay, so we've got that nice note. Record it with two mics. Why not? You know, get some, some variety. Okay, it's a little harsh sounding, but whatever. Who cares? That's not really the purpose of the demo. Okay, we're going to edit this down. So there's our note. And we're going to just export this. It's our first A note. Okay, we can delete it, we've, we've saved it. Now we're gonna go into contact and we're gonna make a new instrument. Okay, making a new instrument, we go into mapping. Here's our samples directory, we're just gonna pull it in. We already know that it's an A, I don't know what octave it should be, but kinda doesn't matter. So already you can hear, this is gonna sound terrible. Let's make a little loop. Pretty awful. Okay. Okay, so the problem is we're playing back the exact same sample over and over and over again. That's awful. I mean, just completely awful. So the way to fix that is you record a bunch of samples. Instead of recording just one, you record four or five. So let's do that. Let's give that a shot. Okay, we got the tuner going, so we know we're com not completely off key. <laughs> Okay, let's grab the last four of those. So, we go back in here, we got four samples, beautiful. And we're gonna cut them down. And in a real world scenario, of course, you would wanna leave more of a tail because there's some decay that I'm kind of just cutting off by playing the next note. Doesn't really matter for the purposes of this demo. Great, so we've got the four samples, let's, let's export them. Now let's go back into contact and we're going to get rid of that one sample because that's not what we want and we're going to make four groups. So and we're going to call them group one, group two, group three, group four, doesn't really matter. Okay, so we've got our four groups. Now we're going to drag these samples in to each one. Okay, so it's playing. That's four samples at once. That sounds awful. So we're gonna, obviously we're gonna try to get it to play only one sample at the same time. So group starts. For the group first group, we want it to cycle round robin. Second one, cycle round robin, cycle round robin, cycle round robin. We go back to group one. Position in round robin chain, one. Position in round robin chain, two. Position in round robin chain, chain three, and you probably figured it out, four. Okay, so let's go back to that pattern I had made before, which just consists of four quarter notes, and see how it sounds now. So it sounds way better. It's, it's much, much more natural. But if you listened, you could also hear our rhythm there. 
And that's weird because I didn't play a rhythm. In fact, all of these quarter notes have the exact same velocity, so they should all really sound pretty much identical. But they don't, and you can hear a rhythm. So let's listen again. You can see, if you look at the groups, group one just happens to be a little louder, something about the character of group one. And because it's always playing the samples back in the same order, you're going to get a rhythm, and it's going to be really, really noticeable. So how do you get around that? Well, one option is use an odd number of samples or use a prime number. Maybe you have like seven different hits and probably your brain isn't going to hear a rhythm if it's seven because nobody's writing in like 7-4 or 7-2 or whatever. That's not a great solution. Number one, because it uses almost double the amount of disk space that four samples would use. But also really what you want is you want it to be random. You want it to be really random. Well, luckily, there's a random mode. I don't know if you noticed, but when I was clicking the group start options, cycle round robin, right below that is cycle random. So let's see what happens when we do cycle random. So now we hit play. So it's better, but it's not great. And the reason it's not great, those weird artifacts that you're hearing are caused by the randomness. Random, of course, means unpredictable, and one of the things you can't predict is whether or not you're going to get the same sample twice. So it might be going along perfectly, one, three, two, four, three, two, four, one, and then all of a sudden it'll throw like a two, two again in it, and that's really, really jarring. I think uh, I can demonstrate this a little bit better if I switch to samples that are much more noticeable. So I'm going to sample my voice now. One, two, three, four. Okay. We've got those four words, we're gonna grab them. One, two, three, four. Not gonna bother with the normalizing. Okay, so let's give this a shot. It's a little silly, but... Okay, so we've got our one, two, three, four samples. Okay, so now we've got my voice instead of the violin samples, and let's hear what happens. Two, two, one, one, three, two, one, three, three, four, three, one, four, 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 three. Four. So those samples are repeating really, really often, um, and that's why it sounds so weird in the violin. So what solutions do we have? There's a way around this, and that is a custom script that still does random, but instead of doing completely random, it excludes whatever was last played. So you'll never get the same note twice. So let's give that a shot. I'm gonna go into script editor. I'm gonna make a new script. I'm gonna hit edit, and I'm gonna copy over the script that I have here. And I'm gonna share the script in the description of this video so you can download it as well. Okay, we'll paste it in, hit apply. You can close the script editor, and we're gonna set these all to always, okay? Good. One, two, one, three, four, two, one, three, four, two, four, one, three, two, four, one, three, okay. two. Okay, so we can see two. that it's working. Obviously, that still sounds completely ridiculous. Okay, let's hear how it sounds with the actual violin samples. Okay, so it's not perfect. Um, there are some things that uh, I would change. I would add a few more velocity layers. I would probably add some variation to the actual rhythm. This isn't really a, a real world scenario, but it's much, much better than just that same repeated rhythm of the round robins. And it's much, much better than the randomizer where you really don't know what you're gonna get. And it's very hard to compose when you don't know what sound is gonna come out of your instrument. Okay. Hope this has been helpful. If you've been enjoying these videos, it'd be great if you could click the little subscribe button. I'm gonna be trying to post these on a regular basis, though of course it depends a little bit on my film commissions.